Yo, what is up, Instagramily family? What is up, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick family? What is up, Tick? Talk fam jamily. Uh, we're all in the house, TGIM fam. Truly thank God it's Monday. Truly thank God for your teens. Seriously. Like, my teens weren't the best. Wasn't the best season of my life. But I'm thankful because God doesn't waste a thing. Seriously. So we can be thankful for even unfavorable circumstance or seasons in our life. Maybe your 20s were an absolute wash. You got arrested, you spent most of your 20s in jail. Maybe your 30s, just an absolute, and I use this with sensitivity, like an absolute train wreck, because I know train wrecks just... Maybe your 40s were just like, I don't know, not what you thought. Um, we can thank God for absolutely anything and everything, because if and when we know the truth, the truth will set us free. Romans chapter 8 says... Um, that God uses all things, even your teens. Yeah, even your teens, even your pre-pubescent hormones. Apparently, I don't, that's what the Bible says. Well, it doesn't say pre-pubescent hormones. It does say Romans chapter eight that God uses all things, uh, together for the good of those who believe in Him and love Him. Um, as we reference Genesis chapter fifty, we see that God redeems and repurposes what the enemy planned for harm. Uh, cause Joseph's brothers, is Joseph Dent here? Yo, is Joseph Visitor here? I don't know. We just got started. People are coming in. Uh, it is Monday. I love Mondays. And maybe we'll just talk about that. Uh, honestly, hot take. Okay, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody that I go to church with that I said this. This is just between us, okay? This is private information. This is private. I might actually like Mondays more than I like... Sundays. I know. I need to get born again, again, again. I should repent. That is probably the least Christian thing anybody has ever said. Unless it's the most Christian thing that anybody has ever said. Because if you truly know the Bible, you will understand that even Mondays could be celebrated. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to take a sip of water, and then we're going to keep talking about whatever it is that we're talking about. Say hi to some people, TGIM them, we got fancy TGIM badges for our TikTok fam. Yo, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick, we're having uh, quite the pre-game show. It is something I want to do more of, and so uh, honestly I apologize. Not because I'm Canadian, but because I'm genuinely apologetic about not getting here earlier. You know, and opening up TikTok or... Instagram so that people can chill, chat, add each other, friend each other, kind of get settled in, say hello, meet and greet, you know, shake some hands, kiss some babies, what, read some Bible, I meant. I greet each other with a Bible verse. Uh, okay, I'm going to take a sip of water. I'm going to calm down. I'm very excited. It is Monday. I do have a proposed reading, and uh, you guys are just the best. Honestly. I <laughs> Bring it in, guys. Bring it in. Ooh. Am I yelling? Good. I'm excited. I feel like I see Mama K in the house. Yes, I do. I see Papa G as well. Mama Kristen, uh, Papa Gerald, Dream Master, Christmas in the house. Um, Papa Jeff has been on my mind and heart, uh, a as have many of you this weekend. And so um, it it's good to be back. So, uh, Genesis chapter 50. We see Joseph talking with his brothers, as we were referencing. I'll finish this thought, I guess. Um, and Joseph's brothers are like, yo, bro. Like, literally to Joseph, as I paraphrase. Yo, bro. Like, we're totally sorry about, like, I don't know, trying to kill you. And then, like, selling you. We literally sold our brother. Like, we're just sorry about, like, I don't know. Dude, people are getting healed from, like, sibling stuff right now. People are getting healed from family stuff right now. Okay, 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 okay. We gotta do this. This is literally happening. If you, for some reason, have been burned, especially by siblings, recently, maybe, honestly, a lot of sibling stuff has come up, I'll say it, like, whatever, vaccination. Vaccination, non-vaccination, COVID, non-COVID, it's really changed the way we interact with our family. Some of us have... So we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray, because maybe there's, like, beef. There's never been so much beef. There, we have never been so divided, honestly. So now, because we've never been so divided, wherever you are, whoever you are, in the past three years, I think it's safe to say that there has never been such a great need for forgiveness and reconciliation. And just like, 
literally, as I kind of paraphrase, but also literally, like, yo, bro, like, to your actual blood, biological birth brother, siblings, sisters, Kimmy and Christmas. Now, I know Kimmy and Christmas, they've never gotten in, into an argument or a disagreement at all. I know Kimmy and Christmas are just, like, tight, are just, like, synced, you know what I'm saying? They're just, like, one, they're just unified. Anyway, if you need, like, sibling stuff, we're gonna pray right now. That's it. You're like, yeah, that's me. I need sibling stuff, whatever that is, in Jesus' name. Um, there's this part of the Bible that's coming to mind right now as we pray for sibling reconciliation. That's what I mean by sibling stuff. Words of Jesus um, come to mind, and it's what God has joined together, let no person separate. Now, we talk a lot about family here because God talks a lot about family here, okay? <laughs> we talk a lot about family here at Livestream Family. It's because God talks a lot about family in the Word of God. Um, as well as forgiveness. Oh my goodness. I was reading the Bible. Surprise. Um, and maybe we'll read it. Forgiveness, honestly, isn't a suggestion from God. It's really not. Okay, we'll, we're going to read this. I, hopefully, I can find it in Luke. We just um, we just read it recently. Hopefully, I can find it, and then we'll pray for, like, family, sibling, reconciliation stuff, because it's important. Listen, guys, nobody wants to beef with their siblings. Nobody wants to beef with their family. Nobody wants... Genuinely, even though it's difficult for us to admit, even though we might not even be conscious of the fact, we genuinely want to get along with our siblings because they're our siblings. Like, we're better than that. Like, we know deep down, we know in our knower that, of course, I don't want to, like, not talk to my sister for 30 years. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, I want to talk to her. It, whatever it is. Um, so we'll read this. And then we'll see where, where we go here. It wasn't Luke. It wasn't Luke. 17. Luke 17. Can we go with Luke 17 verse 3 and onward? Talking about forgiveness... And this is what I studied because I had a question. Okay, so Luke 17, uh, we're going to go with verse 3 and onward. You can write that in the chat for now and we'll see if we actually get to it. <laughs> That's not funny. That's actually not funny. Um, how many of you, when you read the Bible, for our Bible people, now I know we have like non-Bible people, which are my favorite. I, I was a non-Bible person. I did not own a Bible. Somebody gifted me my first Bible when I was an atheist and they were like, bro, I think you need this. A family member of mine, my uncle. I love, I love my family. My uncle gifted me my first Bible. It was like leather with like gold, debossed. I think it was debossed gold. It just said Holy Bible. It was like the most vanilla Holy Bible. Didn't got no maps. Didn't got no study notes. Didn't got no like character historical profiles. Didn't have like the cute diagrams of Solomon's temple, the tabernacle. Anyway, so I get it. I know what it's like. I was an atheist. I was. I genuinely. <laughs> But how many, when you read the Bible, perhaps, or, I don't know. Sometimes when Jesus is saying stuff and he's teaching stuff, it's like, okay, I get that. I get that. Especially when Jesus is like, this is what I mean, guys. Let me, like, help you out and do you a solid. When Jesus does us a solid and says, this is what the parable means. That's great. Sometimes Jesus says things that, um, I don't know aren't the cutest honestly they're not the cutest they're uh, honestly and <laughs> honestly sometimes jesus says things and they're not the most christian you're like what sometimes jesus says things and it's honestly not the most christian you're like that doesn't even make sense jesus christ of course it's going to be christian because christ said it meaning it's not something that you would hear in our churches because they're inconvenient truths they're the hard teachings of Jesus that we wouldn't necessarily be inclined to share. 
in a live stream setting, in a Sunday church setting, because it honestly doesn't grow live streams. It doesn't grow following. In fact, what it does is it will probably decrease. People will probably unfollow if we actually read all the Holy Bible and all of the words of Jesus. And and, and so I've been wrestling with this, uh, meaning, what, what does that mean? That, that's honestly Christianese, a little bit. It's coming from Genesis chapter 32, where Jacob wrestled with God, it says. I would love to talk about that. We're not going to. We're just going to leave that right there. We're going to pin that. We're going to pin that, family. And we'll come back to Jacob wrestling with God in Genesis 32. Probably never. So here, the inconvenient truths of Jesus. uh, And I was just wrestling in the sense that, like, what does this even mean, bro? You think I'm reading the Bible and everything makes sense. You think I'm having a blast in my daily time with God? I'm not. I'm literally, the whole time, I'm like, I'm like, God, what does this even mean? I only have one prayer. I have two prayers. My first prayer is help. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I help. Second prayer is what does this even mean? Those are my two prayers. What does this even mean? Okay, we'll read 17 and verse 3 and onward. Sorry. Luke chapter 17, verse 3 and onward. And then we're going to pray for like family stuff because I think that's important. Well, it's not about what I think. Here we go. Meaning like the Bible's quite clear uh, at all, about forgiveness and reconciliation. And we'll read this. Okay. Luke chapter 17, verse 3 and onward. Words of Jesus. So watch yourselves. If another believer sins, rebuke that person. Oh, my goodness. Then if there is repentance forgive. Oh, my favorite words. Repentance and forgive. Two favorite words. Four rules. No smiling, no laughing, no fun. Serious Bible believing faces only. Those are our four rules here. Repentance. Forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day. Am I reading this right? Oh my goodness. This is verse four. Luke chapter 17, verse four and onward, even if, words of Jesus, even if that person wrongs you seven times a day, and each time turns again and asks for forgiveness, you must, you must forgive. Seven times a day? Bro, that's a lot. I don't even eat chicken and broccoli seven times a day, and trust me, I eat a lot of chicken and broccoli. Bro, I don't even post seven memes a day. And trust me, they're not even funny, but I do post memes. What is even... Jesus, Luke chapter 17, verse 4, says, Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day, you would think by time, time second? (laughs) You would think that time, by time two, by time thrice, you'd be like, get out of here. Like, I'm not going to forgive you. Like, you know, fool me once, fool on me. Fool me twice, fool on... Sorry, fool, fool me once, shame on... Me, fool me twice, shame on you. Something like that. What about, what about fool me seven times? Burn me once, shame on you. Burn me twice, shame on me. Bro, what if somebody legit, and it's your sibling, your literal blood-born bio-sibling, a family, a friend, yo, a business partner, yo, a church leader, yo, a pastor, yo, somebody you trusted, yo, a romantic lover? Bro, what if you got burned seven times? There's no, there's no idiom. There's no idiom for that. Burn me once, fool on you. Burn me twice, fool on me. What about burn me 17 times over? Luke chapter 17. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks for forgiveness, you must forgive. Two favorite words in the Holy Bible. Mine, uh, these two words, you must. So easy. Um, Because then I kind of know what to do. You know, I'm like, can I, can I weasel my way out of this, God, as I read the Bible? You know, my three favorite prayers. Help. What does this even mean? And can I weasel my way out of this? Like, how do I not obey the Lord here? What kind of victim mentality card, I apologize, do I need to play in order to get out of this one? You must. You must forgive. Even if that... Pr- Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again 
and asks for forgiveness, you must forgive. You must. Honestly, for your own sake. It's not for them. It's for you. Unforgiveness, the person who loses the most, the person who gets the most hurt and the most burned, the greatest disservice that unforgiveness does is to ourselves. We are the greatest loser when it comes to unforgiveness. It's not them. We're not hurting them. They're like probably going about their merry way. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day and each time turns again and asks for forgiveness, you must forgive. If you are bold enough, family, if you are bold enough, chat section, right in the chat section, wherever we have six, we have six live platforms right now, six live chat sections. If you are brave enough, write you must and do it in all capitals as all comments should be Renee Robinson, Mama Cynthia. <laughs> You must, in all capitals. Seriously, that? You know what those words do? They bring alignment. They bring alignment. It's just me, guys. It's not you, it's me. Okay, I apologize. It's not you, it's me. I'm the broken one here. I am the one. I'm the, I'm the... I got, I got issues. In the sense that I like to restore order to chaos. It's one of the things that I do. It's one of the things that I enjoy doing. It's one of the things that other people have told me that I do relatively well. Thank God for people around you who can tell you what you're good at. Because sometimes you're like, what's what am I called to? What are my giftings? What are my actual talents? I don't know. I don't know what I like. Thank God for mamas and papas, brothers and sisters, people that you have forgiven that you can know, love, and trust because you've forgiven them and you understand simple human truths. Healthy confrontation, healthy confrontation and reconciliation. Conflict resolution, thank you. Healthy confrontation and conflict resolution. Simple, Sim and then people will tell you, yeah, this is what you do. You restore order to chaos. We see this in your life. Everything's in order. You must. The best words ever. Because when we actually take those two words from the Lord Jesus, from the word of God, you must forgive. You must. It's a non-negotiable. If you're able to, just literally turn to your neighbor, give them a high five and say, it's a non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Or write it in the chat if you're able. Like literally, it's non-negotiable. This is enough for discussion. You must forgive. And when we understand certain non-negotiables in the Holy Bible and how they serve us well, and when we begin to negotiate, do not negotiate the terms of your calling with the Lord. Do not negotiate the terms of your calling with the Lord. It's very dangerous. And I'm going to leave it at that. You must. Those words, when we live with this you must attitude and paradigm, with anything, diet. Like literally muscles are made in the kitchen, not at the gym. Like your diet, my guys. My dudes and my dudettes. My homies, my bros. Uh, my brothers uh, and uh, my sisters. Like diet, non-negotiable. Eat, sleep, train. Non-negotiable. Go to the gym, get some exercise, go for a walk, I don't, whatever. You know what I'm saying? You must forgive. What that does is brings alignment. Brings alignment. Brings alignment. And many of us, we'd be like, Ugh, Listen, babbling, bobbling, can barely wear a red hat, always yells at us, Bible boy. Like, you're like, I'm doing pretty good as an adult. I've been adulting for like 40-something years. I don't need your alignment. Bro, honestly, um, some of us can't even sleep on time, can't even control. Like, are, do we need sleep training? Like, are we infants? Like, infants get sleep training. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to, like, adjust the sleep schedule. And by the way, Unknown was like, we're, we are turning back the clocks. So there's that thing. There's, like, daylight, hashtag daylight savings time that's coming up next week. We'll talk more about that. We can't even eat, sleep, and train properly. We can't even, like, control our diet. We can't even, like, self-discipline. Now I'm eating sugar. I shouldn't even be eating sugar because of, like, my health conditions. Like, it's just, like, and I can't exercise. It's like, bro, we need we need all the help we could get. Let's be honest. We need we need all the help. It's it's 
It's a tough sell. I'll just say it's a tough sell. If somebody comes up to you and they're like, I don't need alignment in my life. I don't need alignment. I'd be like, you better have a good, pretty good reason. You better, <laughs> like, you, what do you mean you don't need alignment? Like, what are you talking about? Um, here we go. Luke chapter 17, verse 4. Because we haven't, we have not read it enough times, apparently. We haven't read this one verse. Luke chapter 17, verse 4. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day, and each time turns again and asks you for, for forgiveness, you must forgive. The next verse says this. The apostles said, because this is Jesus talking to the apostles or the disciples, like we're talking Peter, Andrew, John, James, like the twelve. The twelve. The apostles said to the Lord, that's Jesus, show us how to increase our faith. And this is when I was reading this recently, family, in our one-year Bible reading plan, that more and more people are doing and joining and downloading uh, for free off of the website. <gasps> I saw Andrew. I saw Andrew Karamatic here. Andrew Karamatic printed this out because he downloaded it for free off of our website eh? and he laminated it. Guys, I'm in Canada. I'm on the other side of the universe. Papa Andrew is in Brisbane, Australia. And this has literally been printed and landed from Canada all the way in Brisbane, Australia, laminated. And then Papa Andrew's like, yeah, because I'm going to do it too, guys. And then he's like, he's like, I want to give one to my friend or my family member, which reminds me, we need to pray for family. That's awesome. The Bible reading plan has landed in Australia and is officially laminated and has been gifted to another individual. That's nuts. Resurrection Apparel has literally landed in Norway. Papa Lage from Twitch Family was like, yo, how do I cop myself one of those teas? How do I cop myself some of that fresh drip, my guy? All I see is flames, cause that t-shirt is absolute fire. How do I cop myself? I mean, that's not what Papa Lage said, but that's the way I re I'm retelling the story, at least right now. Yo. My guy, how do I cop myself some of that fresh drip? Because all I see is flames. Um, It's landed. That's where I was going with that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. I know. I, we got a serious, serious Bible-believing faces only. Um, No fun. No smiling. No laughing. Serious Bible faces only. Brother Lage. Papa Lage all the way from Norway. Anyways, so I love our fam. I think that's where I was going. And we're going to pray for fam. I love our peeps. We are truly worldwide. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Kick, Instagram, as well as TikTok. Should we read that same verse again? No, let's move on. Uh, the apostle said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. So I was like, what does this even mean? My favorite prayer. Seriously? <laughs> I'll say this. People who seem to have all the answers are because they've done the work and they are the people who ask the questions. If you have a lot of questions, I have good news for you. One day you will have all the responses and all the answers. If they're not bad questions, meaning, or we don't have a bad approach, and I digress, but I think this is going to help some people, it's okay for us to have questions. It is not okay for questions to have us. Because questions make great tools. They make great servants. They just make terrible masters. It's okay for us to have questions, not okay for questions to have us. And of course, that's coming from 1 Timothy and just 2 Timothy, uh, Genesis chapter 3. The first thing the serpent says to Eve, did God really say? A question. Oldest trick in the book, my friends. Questions. So I'm asking God, sorry, there was a lot there because we talked about Genesis chapter three and then this is like, that was a can of worms, the serpent and Eve, sorry. Luke chapter 17, Jesus is like, my guys, literally my dudes, literally my 12 apostles, apostles, my 12 disciples, uh, yo, he's like, forgive them seven times. If somebody, if somebody burns you seven times a day, forgive them every single time. And that's not a literal seven, it's like, it's kind of like a figure of speech, you could say, for unlimited, is how the Bible uses that number and this language and this conversation. It's not like, so if somebody burns me eight times, 
Is Jesus going to be like, yeah, don't forgive them on the eighth time? Like, obviously not. Jesus means like forever you must forgive. And you're like, why are we talking about forgiveness? I wanted to talk about angels. I wanted to talk about demons. I wanted to talk about whatever it is. Love life? I don't, can we just talk about romance? You know what I'm saying? Can we just talk about how to find the one? Like, seriously, hot topics, great. You mean, Like, meaning trendy topics. Like, stuff that gets views. Why are we... Stuff that gets views. Why are we talking about forgiveness? You cannot remove forgiveness from the Bible. You cannot remove forgiveness from the gospel. Forgiveness is... One of the largest cores and crux and foundational pieces of the gospel. And all if all we did was talk about forgiveness, I know some of us would be like, we need to forgive this person for talking about forgiveness so much. We would be actually preaching pure gospel. Forgiveness is everything. Have we not freely received the forgiveness for our sins? Freely we have received, now freely we give. So Jesus is like, okay, you must forgive. And then and then the apostles are like, help us increase our faith. And you're like, what does this have to do with anything? Bro, Jesus is talking about forgiveness. What do you mean help us increase our faith? They're seeing miracles and signs and wonders. They're like, meaning like people are literally being miraculously healed. Uh, Jesus is like multiplying food. Uh, there's like lots of miracles happening, turning water into wine. And here, when it comes to forgiveness, the apostles are asking, help us increase our faith. The apostles said to the Lord, show us how to increase our faith. Why? Honestly, I'll say it. Miracles and signs and wonders dream interpretation, giving a prophetic word, the supernatural stuff, the gifting, honestly, like healing the sick, that's, that's honestly easier. It's honestly easier because at times it requires no character. You can operate out of the gift with no character. When it comes to forgiving, my friends, you will need faith. And the apostles responded in this way. Dude, they were living in it. They they rolled and they rocked and they ran with Jesus for three years. Seeing Jesus do all the miracles and the signs and the wonders. But when it comes to, my guys, you must forgive, then they're like, God, increase our faith. Why do you need an increased faith for forgiveness, but not for the miracles and the signs and the wonders and everything that they watched Jesus do and were a part of? They were a part of these miracles. It's because it's forgiveness that takes us not into the deepest, darkest regions where we can preach the gospel, the deepest, darkest temples, honestly, temples. It is, it is having to forgive each other, having to. You must, non-negotiable, where we go to the deepest, darkest places within oneself. Show us how to increase our faith. I, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need faith for that. And Jesus continues to unpack this. If you care to continue reading and to see how the rest of actually this iconic historic scene unfolds, there's a few more verses none of which we're going to read right now. Because I think this is the spot. I think we have an opening here. And it's to forgive ourselves. That's a tough one. Sometimes, honestly, when I live stream, okay, as a group, we live stream as a family. But, you know, I have a, I have a small role here, pushing buttons, whatever. Getting here on time. You know what I'm saying? Opening up things earlier for the pregame shows where people can chill and chat and just at each other, add each other, follow each other, DM each other, you know, build community and foster family. And I speak, I speak in person too. I do a lot of like publics. I teach uh, in person. 
And sometimes, if not most of the time, I have to forgive myself because I don't know, it just didn't go as well as I would have thought. Maybe I go to a family dinner and it just didn't go as well as I would hoped. You know, I thought we'd all hold hands and hug each other and weep in reconciliation. I'm so sorry for what I did to you seven years ago. You know, I I'm so sorry that, that when you had your milestone birthday, I wasn't there for you. <laughs> And, and instead, I don't know, I, I, went, I had other things to do or I was too drunk or I was too high to basically even function. And I, I, I could show up to my daughter's piano recital because I worked overtime chasing the bag. Like whatever it is, forgiving ourselves is huge. We are our own worst critic. We're going to need faith for that. And we are going to give us all, including myself, an invitation to forgive ourselves for letting ourselves down, f forgive each other for letting us down. Guilty as charged. I put expectations over people that they are not even supposed to meet, nor are they actually qualified to meet them. Honestly, my dad. Honestly, my mother, honestly, my family. And I'm like, I'm like, I have these expectations for my father, like my literal blood, birth, biological parents. And I'm like, I'm like, bro, they're not even qualified to meet those expectations. Like, bro, chill, Jeremy, chill. Like my mom brought me into the world for crying out loud. So give her a break. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who brought me into the world, just forgive them for any th expectations that they failed to meet. BTW, by the way, most of the time, they're false expectations that people aren't supposed to meet anyway. Where am I going with this? I cannot give you, I cannot give you something that I, I, I do not myself have. In order for me to give you something, I must first possess it myself. We cannot give people what we ourselves do not have. We cannot give people what we ourselves have not received. Or we cannot take people where we ourselves have not gone. I don't, I don't know the way. I've never been there before. I can't, I can't take you there. I've never been there. I can't give you this because I literally don't own it. What's going to happen right now is you are going to receive forgiveness for all of your sins. We're going to pray to Jesus together. You're like, I don't know what that means. I'm new to this. Guess what? You're new to this, I'm good at this, in the sense that I've been new, I've been in your shoes. I know what it's like to be an atheist, I know what it's like to be agnostic, and sometimes I know what it's like to be a theist, sometimes. Meaning believing in a higher power, a deity, God. When you believe in Jesus, you receive the forgiveness of sins. We have all done something wrong with the Bible called sin. When you believe in Jesus, you receive forgiveness for everything you've done wrong, everything you've thought wrong, every wrong heart attitude of honestly, lust. That's a big one. Anger, hatred, those are big ones. Harboring grudges against other people for maybe tens of years, that's a big one. Unforgiveness, heart issues, what the Bible calls sin. We've all done something wrong, but when you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven and you receive forgiveness, and you will know what it's like, and you will feel it, literally feel it. You will experience it. And as the Bible says, words of Jesus, freely you have received, now freely give. When we receive forgiveness, knowing what we've done, there are things that we have done wrong that nobody knows about except God, except for maybe you and God. Secrets, secret sin. God's gonna forgive you for that stuff that nobody else knows about. And when you receive forgiveness for that stuff, I know some things are coming to mind right now. When you receive forgiveness for that stuff, it, it, it hits home. You're like, really, even for that stuff? are the questions that we get online, live. 
when we talk about the gospel. What's that? The good news of Jesus Christ? That right here, right now, you can be forgiven of sins when you simply believe in Jesus. And we'll tell you what it means to believe in Jesus and how you do that. But what also happens when you believe in Jesus is not only are your sins forgiven, but you get into heaven. Now, we will all pass on. Our bodies have a shelf life, an expiry date, and we will all go the way of the earth. We will all pass on. The fantastic news, the good news of Jesus, is that when you believe in Jesus, you will actually not die. Right here, right now, you can receive eternal life in heaven. When you pass on, you will actually live forever. Eternal life in heaven. But we're not just sitting around until the pain and suffering ends finally when we pass on. We're not just sitting around waiting to get into heaven the day we pass on for us to experience peace or power or liberation or truth. Basically, your understanding and concept of heaven or this word that Jesus uses in the Gospel of Luke, paradise, we're not just waiting for us to go to heaven. What begins to happen is heaven gets into you and you begin to experience the things of heaven like freedom. Freedom from every malicious, disgusting ounce of unforgiveness, of toxicity, of impurity. Do you know why honey never expires? Honey, like from beehives, like honey, like honeybees, like honey. It has a shelf life, my friends, of forever. It doesn't expire. Honey never expires, why? Because it literally does not have any impurities. Even when you introduce water, you start to mix water, water, bro, water with honey, it will spoil. Honey will spoil when you introduce water. That's how pure honey is. Where am I going with this? You will become pure. Forgiveness of sins, you get into heaven, heaven gets into you. Do you know what happens to things in your pantry, in your refrigerator? Honey that has impurities, they rot. They rot. They spoil. Do you know what happens to honey if it is absolutely pure? It lasts. Now, of course, I'm being proverbial and parabolic and metaphoric for our lives. You have impurities. Honestly, you die faster. You die faster. It's called stress. Your body just can't fight your immune system. Your systems are doing so many other things like un I'm like unforgiving this person. I'm going to unforgive this. I'm like just harboring unforgiveness. It takes a lot of strength. You know what I'm saying? Like a men mental capacity. Bro, 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 bro. When you receive Jesus, impurities leave. And you become a pure vessel and you will just last, honestly, forever. Eternal life in heaven, but even right here, right now, impurities are killing you. Freely receive forgiveness, and then freely give. That's the plan, okay? That's the plan. So yes, when you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven, you get into heaven, heaven gets into you. The greatest of which thing, things that happen when you believe in Jesus you have a personal relationship uh, with a God, with God. You have a personal relationship with God. That's huge. You get to know God. Bro, you get to hear from God. God will legit talk to you about everything. Oh my gosh, we have so many stories. I can't believe just in the past couple days, in the past 48 hours, God has told me things and I'm like, that's cute. And then I literally live it out the next day. God will tell you the future. Exactly. Exact people and exact items. Like literally exact locations. It's crazy. The list of incentives. The list of motives and reasons to believe in Jesus are honestly unlimited. Forgiveness of sins, sure. Eternal life in heaven, heaven on earth, personal relationship with God. So how do we do that? 
What does that even mean? I had that same question as an atheist. Many people have that same question because this is an open forum. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick, and TikTok, and Instagramly Family, we have six different platforms, and you could imagine the types of people that come in here because it's Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Kick, TikTok, and Instagram, like we get atheists, and we get agnostics, and we get Luciferians who decide to believe in Jesus. Guys, followers of Lucifer come in here, we share Jesus, they decide to follow Jesus instead of follow Lucifer live on live stream. They're like, I'm going to change my screen name now. We have atheists come in here. They're like, I'm atheist. I came into this live stream as an atheist, but now I responded to that invitation you gave us, which is the invitation I'm giving you guys right now. And then they're like, I'm not an atheist anymore. One live stream, bro. Yeah. Over and over again for like over a hundred weeks, two years. We've been doing this for over two years. And on average, every single week, we've seen at least one person not believe in Jesus, decide to believe in Jesus live on live stream. So you're not alone is what I'm saying. We've all been there. We've all received. Forgiveness. That's what it means. To believe in Jesus, it's when you believe that Jesus is who he is and that Jesus has done for you what he's done for you. It's when you change your mind. This is how we do it. This is what it means to believe in Jesus and what it looks like. It's when you change your mind about Jesus. That's it. That's all you have to do. And I'll tell you more about this. It's all you have to do. It's a change of mind that the Bible calls repentance. Repentance. It's a fancy Bible word that just means change your mind. Now, surely, if it's a truthful and genuine change of mind, a change of heart, you will see that lived out in people's actions. You will see it demonstrated in their lives. True and genuine change of mind, it's almost self-evident. Oh, that's good. I like that. Somebody's got to write that in the chat. A true and genuine change of mind, a true change of mind is self-evident. A, a genuine change of heart, my friends, is self-evident. That's what it means. So meaning true and genuine repentance, somebody will actually turn away from sin and turn toward Jesus. That's what it will look like. And that's how we do it. That's what it means to believe in Jesus. It's when you believe that Jesus forgives you for your sins. It's when you believe Jesus gives you eternal life in heaven. It's when you believe that Jesus has done for you what he's done for you. There is a cost for our wrongdoing. There is a penalty for our sin. It is a death penalty. However, this is the good news of Jesus. Jesus died in your place so that he could pay your personal death penalty for your individual sins. When? He was crucified, nailed to a cross, then laid in a tomb, and then he resurrected from the dead, proving that he is who he says he is, through the fulfillment of over 300 prophecies or predictions about who exactly the savior of your soul, of your soul is. So if this is you, and right now you do not, believe in Jesus, but you want to. You you want to believe in Jesus, receive forgiveness for your sins, eternal life in heaven, heaven on earth, and personal relationship with God. I am going to lead you in a guided prayer. It's not the prayer that saves you. It's only Jesus that saves you. But we'll pray to Jesus together. You can repeat the prayer after me, and I'll just guide you in your first few steps. Because this is an invitation for you if right now you do not believe in Jesus. But you want to. You want to receive forgiveness for your sins, eternal life in heaven, heaven on earth, personal relationship with God. And all you are doing is changing your mind about Jesus. Believing that he is who he is. And that Jesus has done for you what he's done for you. If this is you, just repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus, today, I believe in you. 
I receive forgiveness for my sins. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried and you rose again. I welcome you into my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 If this is you and you responded to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus, however, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You have freely received the first step. You've received the forgiveness for everything you've ever done wrong, what the Bible calls sin. You've also received eternal life in heaven. Right here, right now, it's confirmed. When you pass on, confirmed, you are getting into heaven. You now have eternal life in heaven, and you now can experience heaven on earth. Personal relationship with God himself is now available to you. You are now, as we call, a child of God. So if this is you and you have responded to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus, however, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus, just let us know. Just let us know. We would love to embrace you, receive you, cheer you on, champion you, maybe pray a prayer of blessing with you about your life, your friends, your family, your circumstance. And we definitely want to give you free stuff. So if you have responded to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus. However, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus. Just let us know by typing, I did in the live chat. Just let us know by typing, I did in the comment section here. Maybe you're watching live. Maybe you're watching on replay. If you've responded to this invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus. However, through this invitation, you now do believe in Jesus. Just let us know by typing, I did. I did. We do not want to embarrass you. We genuinely want to embrace you receive you, cheer you on, champion you, maybe pray a prayer of blessing about your life, your friends, family, your circumstance. Uh, and we definitely want to give you free stuff. Maybe this is something you have already done. Many months ago, many years ago, you've already done this. You already have a pre-existing relationship with Jesus. But honestly, for the past few months, for the past few years, you have not been prioritizing your already pre-existing relationship with Jesus. But today you want to. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus after turning away from Jesus for months, maybe even years. If this is you and you are rededicating your life to Jesus after turning away from Jesus for months, maybe even years, just type I do in the live chat just type i do in the comment section maybe you're watching on on replay whether you're watching on replay or or you're watching live just let us know if you're rededicating your life to jesus after turning away from jesus for months or years just type i do we do not want to embarrass you again we sincerely want to embrace you Maybe pray with you, a prayer of blessing over you, your life, your circumstance. We definitely want to give you free stuff. And once again, if you responded to the very first invitation, which means you did not believe in Jesus, however, through that very first invitation that we first gave you, you, you now believe in Jesus. Once again, just type, I did. Type, I did. If you responded to the first invitation, our online pastoral care team from Brisbane, Australia, from En Francais Friday, France, like we got people here in your chat section already loving on you, responding to people, praying with people. I'm just going to join in the live chats. We have six different 
six different live chats happening right now. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Kick, TikTok, as well as Instagramly family. I'm just going to take a sip of water, if you will allow me. And then I will uh I'll see I'll see what's happening in the chat. Now, you don't need me. You don't need me in the chat, really. Um we have people. We the last person honestly we need to hear from is me. The first person we need to hear from is a Jesus. Uh, come on somebody. So if there there's no one person that's able to read or respond to every comment so thankfully, we're doing this the same way anything, honestly, can be done in life. And that's together. As friends and as, as family. As a tribe, some might say. As a tribe. As a vibe. Yo, this this tribe is a vibe. Somebody type that in the chat. I mean, if you're not in the middle of something serious. Like, you're, like, literally lifting up. I don't even know what's happening in the chat right now. But, like, you know. This tribe is a vibe. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. Oh. Sorry, a little off pitch. I apologize. We just pray for, for healing for anybody's ears who that hurt. That was probably a little off key. Yo, let's go, Joe Visitor. Who is this person? I love our Instagram fam. I feel like I should know who this person is. Where's IG fam? Okay, we're going to leave that. Uh, Joe Visitor is in the house, though. IG fam is growing. Like, literally. Gr literally growing. Uh, I love all of our platforms. Different demographic. Like, you'll just see different vibes, actually. <laughs> literally. We're not going to talk about that. Let's go to TikTok. Speaking, of, speaking about different vibes. Here we go. Uh, Andrea Mendibles. My son loves that song. The Buzz Lightyear Woody. So wholesome. You know, if an astronaut can get along with a cowboy, I think we can get along with each other. You know what I'm saying? If Buzz Lightyear can get a, get get along with, what's, what's the cowboy's name? Woody. <gasps> You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. Somebody just write, You've got a friend in me. At somebody somebody in the chat literally call them out literally put at and then their screen name or like just i don't know i think you can just tap their name and then it'll, it'll, the comment section on the tiktok will just at them automatically anyway andrea mendibles you've got a friend in us we love you we know you we trust you we honor you and i think it was your son that you were referring to you got a friend in amelia uh you are loved says mama bonnie talking to all of us perhaps talking to one of us in particular maybe as i catch up in the chat here i'm in the middle of cleaning andrea mandibles how many of y'all moms moms just multitask it's like they just do everything god bless moms it don't gotta be mother's day for us to honor moms you know what i'm saying if you're a person we honor you Doctors, first responders, whoever, atheists, agnostics, Satanists, Luciferians, different faith backgrounds, like it, we honor you all year around, in spite of your background, all year around. Uh, Mama Cynthia, I can't even read this comment. I can't even get through this comment. It's all capitals, and it's all love, and... <laughs> These emojis, though. <sighs> Is that chicken and broccoli and hug emoji and rockets? An ob obnoxious amount of rocket emojis. Mama Cynthia, thank you for these words. Blue Hawk 1 3. That's it. That's it. You know what? There's no reading the comment. There's definitely just hugs for Mama Cynthia. Okay, how do we do this? Oh, let's go, Mama Cynthia. Yo, Blue Hawk 1 3, Mama Cynthia. Very kind words for the whole family here. Humbling. Uh, literally humbled. Um, but I was going to say, Mama Cynthia has been with us for a long time. Here, present, in our lives for a long time. Loving people, responding to people, championing people, laughing with people for a long time. Mama Cynthia, a legend. Yo, somebody at Mama Cynthia Blue Hawk 13. They were on the YouTube last week, but back on TikTok. Uh, Blue Hawk. Oh, Blue Hawk is chosen. 
Um, Mama Cynthia, of course. Just at them. Tell them they're great. Tell them you've got a friend in me. Andrea Mendibles is going to preach session number two. The title of our conference, You've Got a Friend in Me. Um, we went from forgiveness to friendship. Wait, because that's what always happens. After you forgive somebody, you're friends. We go from forgiveness to friendship. That's a message in and of itself. Uh, where are we? Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and kick comment sections. You must. Oh, sorry. That clap was probably, I just clapped in your face. I, I, I apologize. I got really excited. Shaboom, shaboom. Because Joe Visitor, wait, I'm pointing. Because Joe Visitor uh, on the Twitch fam over here saying you must in all caps, as all comments could and should be. All capitals. Isn't that right? Renee Robinson and Mama Cynthia. Um, Joe Visitor, this is hilarious. Joe Visitor's got a good sense of humor. We love Joe Visitor here with us every single day. They're saying, I'm late for stream. Forgive me. Very clever in terms of like, that's exactly what we we're talking about. So obviously Joe Visitor is understanding the topic of today's conversation. I honestly thought we we're going to talk about something completely different. <gasps> completely different. But God, God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it. Oh, that was good. That was good preach. I'm going to need faith to forgive some of these people. Just kidding. All right, here we go. Comment sections. Let's go! Oh, yo, Abby Gamer back in the house on the Twitch fam. Love Twitch fam. Um, Twitch fam is growing. YouTube fam, lots of comments. We'll see what we'll see what happens. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. Copyright strikes. Bring it on. We're good. We're, we're fine. We're fine with that. Oh, yo, blue, Burning Blue Star is back in the house. We know, love, and trust. Hey, actually, Burning Blue Star. Can somebody add? I know many people are already loving on blue, Burning Blue Star on YouTube, but can we just once again just like at Burning Blue Star and just like, how do I, how do I at people? Okay, I'm not going to touch. Something's going to break. Um... Yeah, we had really fun times with Burning Blue Star, as we do with everybody. Last week, we were, we were just praying together uh, last week with Burning Blue Star. And now they're back. Let's go, buddy. What does this say? Yo, it was so accurate. Actually? You mean last week when we were praying? Oh, dude, we prayed so many things. And it was the best. God really... Was that Thursday? Was that the third? Last week's? I don't know what it is about Thursdays. Our Thursday streams aren't bad. As for the Monday streams, trash. Tuesday streams, trash. Wednesday streams, trash. Friday streams, trash. But our Thursday streams, family, our Thursday streams are pretty hot. They pretty hot. They super hot fire. With, with FYA. FYI, in case you want to know how to spell fire. Super hot fire. Which is an old YouTube meme. If you know, you know. If you don't, don't look it up. Please don't. Don't look up anything that I mentioned. Here we go. Um, unknown adventures. The only thing we need to look up is up to Jesus. Look up. Look up to Jesus. Look up to Jesus. See what I... It's okay, guys. I love you. It's okay, guys. We're gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. Unknown adventures in the house. Mama Harriet, we know, love, trust. Um, Blue Star, jumping in. Hey, thanks for that feedback. It's good to see you. We were already commenting in YouTube pregame show. I'm just going to catch up with everything that's happened in the past 60 minutes. No, it's been 90 minutes. YouTube's been live for 90 minutes. I know. I know. Okay. More like 70. But like, 5. 75. How, wait, doesn't it say how long we've been live for? One hour and 23 minutes. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. I'm pretty close. One hour and 23 minutes and 25 seconds we've been live for. 
you know what? God bless technology. Literally, we need God to bless the technology because sometimes the technology ain't blessing us. The technology, the technology ain't blessing us. It's cost. It's given us stress. But hashtag too blessed to be stressed. Look at all these blessings in our in our chat section. It's meaning our people. Way too blessed to be stressed. Somebody's got to write that in the chat. Write meow. Write meow. You have cat to be kitten me. Write meow. Somebody just write hashtag too blessed to be stressed. But make sure it's grammatically correct. Because if it's not, we might have to rebuke something. Too blessed with two O's. Just something I've learned here. Grammar. Too blessed to be stressed. Somebody's got to write... <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Too blessed to be stressed. Guys, seriously. Four rules. It's so simple. No laughing, no smiling, no fun. Serious faces only. Guys, just four simple rules. Um. Okay. Well, what we'll do then is just cruise through these comments very quickly. Alive for Life is in the house. Oh, Alive for Life, encouraging us all. <laughs> Love Alive for Life. A man of God, honestly, guys. Alive for Life. Been journeying with us for quite some time, quite regularly. Love the whole family. Speaking of which, Lisa McDonald also journeying with us for quite some time, gifting us equipment. Thank you, Mama Lisa. We're literally, it's right here. We're using it every single day. So uh, thank you, Mama Lisa McDonald. The best, helping us develop. Um, oh, we got somebody over here saying, I love Jesus. Grammatically correct. Like, a capitalized J for the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? They're saying, I love Jesus. Lots of exclamation marks. How many exclamation marks is this? It's a lot that they're starting to all blend together the longer I look at this comment. Says this person, Steve. That's their screen name. I apologize if I mispronounce anybody's screen name, but their screen name is legitimately Steve. Is what I'm seeing here. Love that. Um, Mama Harriet's talking about something about 19 years. What am I? What am I reading here? What's going on? Everything. Oh, yo, this person named Tavon. Tavin. You must. You must, it says, as we were reading. Not the comment I was looking for, but definitely the comment that I needed. Thank you for saying that. Exactly. Oh my gosh, everybody's the you musts. I'm in the you must section of the chat section. Okay, I'm going to continue reading. <laughs> the memes! Oh, dude, I love YouTube. I love all of our chat sections, but the memes here. Mama Victoria, let's go, buddy. Yeah, Luke chapter 17, verse 3 and onward. Lisa McDonald, thank you for joining the tech team. Hashtag TGIM, thank God it's Monday. Mama Victoria, just preaching it. Jack Jacob, streaming in live from the Philippines. Let's go. We got Philippines live. No, hey, Faith Diane came back. You guys remember Faith Diane? Faith Diane, uh actually funny this is actually funny in the sense that i things that you don't need to know things that you probably didn't want to know about me i was i was in a bowling league i was in a bowling league like i bowled for many years we placed first this one year just thought i'd let the whole internet know but it wasn't me it's because one of my teammates literally carried the team as last week we were talking about jesus just tanks damage he is the tank that takes damage like meaning galatians where it says like he he bore our sins and, and, and the curse on, unto himself. So that's last week's. Anyways, bowling. Faith Diane comes in and they're like, guys, I'm a pro bowler. Singapore. Here, here's my newspaper article. They're like, I'm guys, I'm famous. And then Faith Diane comes in and they're like, I'm humbly telling you that I'm famous. Faith Diane says. And then they're like, yeah, but doctors told me. Faith Diane from Singapore. Anyways, doctors said that they that Faith Diane needs to inject steroids into her fingers. Like a needle. I don't like, I don't like needles. I mean, we don't need to talk too much about needles right now, but needless, just the way I like my life. <laughs> needless to say, um, 
Yeah, ain't nobody want to be sticking needles in their fingers. Uh, Faith Diane's like, doctor said that I need to uh, inject steroids into my fingers. Uh, can we pray? So we're like, hey, Singapore family, Faith Diane streaming in live from Singapore. Um, yeah, we'll pray. And then so, it, like in Jesus' name, be healed. Amen. They go to the doctor and the doctor's like, yeah, by the way, you don't need to inject steroids into your fingers anymore after we pray. So we're like, Praise Jesus. That's what we, we said. Merci beaucoup, Yeshua, Mama G. Somebody just write. I know it's going to be challenging. Merci beaucoup. You're like, how do I? I can't even spell too, too blessed to be stressed. Now this guy wants me to spell merci beaucoup. <gasps> Bro, merci beaucoup, Yeshua. Give that one a try. Merci, merci beaucoup, Yeshua. Let's go, bud. Okay, we're having too much fun. We need to, like, end the fun and get, like, super serious. Forgiveness. God, we just thank you for forgiveness. You know what I see happening? Okay, this is Romans. This is not Romans. It's Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, as we pray now for, like, forgiveness and stuff. Hebrews chapter 12, it says that for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. Like, even endured the shame. The shame. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, sometimes, honestly, when you forgive somebody, it might require, I don't know, a little bit of humility. And it might be shameful. I don't know. It's just not... Because I feel like pride, pride is what holds other people hostage to things that they've... That are long gone. That are just done. That are just in the past. It's pride that holds other human beings, guys. Human beings. Just like you and me. We're just people. Like precious people. Like we're no different is what I'm saying. It's pride that holds other human beings hostage to things that are just done. They're just, it's so, that was yesterday, bro. We read, if somebody burns you and hurts you and wrongs you seven times a day, bro, it's done. Whatever. That was like so 10 minutes ago. You know what I'm saying? We forgive you. Pride is what holds other people hostage to things they've done in the past. But humility is what actually acts as the active agent. Humility. Aside from, obviously, the Holy Spirit being the greatest active agent for forgiveness. But humility is what will actually... Um, I, th I think birth. True and genuine forgiveness. Because you're, you're not ashamed. You're just humble and you're like, listen, I, I, I forgive you. Again, Hebrews chapter 12, Jesus says, well, in, in the Bible, it talks about Jesus enduring for the joy set before him. That's what I saw. For the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. And this is what I see right now. It's for the joy set before us that we forgive others. Because on the other side of forgiveness, we're Gucci, baby. As the kids no longer say, but I still say, I'm a bit of a boomer, but that's all right. We don't need to talk about that. Because we Gucci, baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're good. Like, we're all good. You know? Um for the joy set before us for the joy set before them TikTok family forgave the people that they needed to forgive for the joy set before Jeremy Jeremy forgave the person that he needs to forgive for the joy set before Facebook, YouTube, Twitch and Kick family they forgave whoever it is that they need to forgive the person maybe next to you in your chat section who's like I don't know <gasps> being the internet you know what I'm saying because sometimes people jump in our sometimes people jump in our chat section and it's like this this person is representing the internet. This is this is the internet. You're like, this is the internet. Yep, this is definitely the internet. Whoever. In, for, for the joy set before them, Instagramily family forgave people in their family. Literally. God, we just thank you for the joy set before us. That's why we forgive. There's that, and then there is the you must. It's a non-negotiable, which we read, but, you know, it's a good thing, like... We do benefit in so many ways. So we just thank you, Lord, for the joy, for the joy, for the joy, for the joy. It's almost like for the joy set before us on the other side of forgiveness, but it's also if we have joy before we forgive, it's like it's that joy and it's that happiness and it's that freedom and it's all, I'll use these words, it's kind of like a carefree living. It's like a low stakes, bro, this, this, I'm vibing. 
I don't even care, so I forgive you. Like, if you're in a good place, you're, you, you have joy, like, you don't even care. You're just like, I, I don't even, somebody will come up to you and they'll be like, yo, I'm so sorry for what I did. They'll be like, can you forgive me? And you'll, you're so vibing, bro. You're, you're like, actually for the joy that you already have, you're like, bro, I didn't even think twice about that. Like, thank you for saying you're sorry, but I haven't even, I don't need to forgive you because I wasn't ever, ever hurt. Like I wasn't even, yeah, we're done. We're good. We're clean. We're, we're fine. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're good. We're good. The joy, the joy, the joy from the top of our heads to the tips of our toes, inside and out, inside and out, inside and out. Joy. God is going to renew your minds. Now we can go to Romans 12 because we were referencing Hebrews 12. But Romans chapter 12 talks about, of course, the renewing of the mind. I, I, I see right here, right now, true and genuine change of mind, change of heart, the seed of our innermost being. It's this renewing of the mind that is actually going to help you see things so differently that you become a different person. It is the renewing of the mind that's taking place right now live maybe on replay as you're watching or listening or whatever it's the renewing of the mind that is actually gonna make a difference in your life it's gonna make you think so differently that you begin to feel and live so differently with joy and with gratitude and maybe it's the simple change of mind, the renewing of the mind that's, you know what, no harm, no foul, because I'm just as screwed up as this person. I'm just as busted. I just have, I have just as many character issues as that person. So who am I? That would, I guess, make me a hypocrite in that moment if we're unforgiving somebody, like harboring unforgiveness towards somebody for being a complete douche bucket. Yeah, we just said that. But meanwhile, Bro, you're a douche bucket. We're all... So God, we just thank you for renewing in Jesus' name, the mind, for the joy. Ha! Huh. I release and impart joy. Just receive it, guys. Just take it for free. I just give it to you. I freely have received. So healed that we just like, guys, just, it's here. It's, it's Jesus. Take it. In Jesus' name, amen. I think we're done. It's about chicken and Brock o'clock healing. We should definitely pray for healing. Okay, so, uh, I don't know. Turn to somebody next to you, give them a high five, and say, we're going to pray for healing miracles. Just type this out in the chat. We're going to pray for healing miracles in all capitals. We are going to pray for healing miracles. Okay, so uh, we've been doing this for two years. Lots of healing miracles <gasps> in person. Okay, dude, I, I don't know why this came to mind. Maybe because it's going to happen right now. Um, these two ladies come to our church, one of our churches. We're, without getting, these two ladies come to our church. One of them's in a wheelchair, the mom. The mom is in a wheelchair, ruptured brain bleed. First time at our church. You can see the scar because doctors operated, ruptured brain bleed. And the doctors were like, yo, we operated. There's the scar. Like, And they were like, you can never walk again. You will never walk again. You lost all of your motor skills. That ruptured brain bleed took out your, took out your motor skills. You can't walk. This is the mom coming to our church for the first time with their daughter. So it's mom and daughter. Mom can't walk. Ruptured brain bleed. Doctors were like, and we love doctors. I don't know. We just need to make that more clear. Like, we love people. Ruptured brain bleed, you'll never walk again. Comes to our church in a wheelchair. Her daughter has a has a tumor. This is their first time at our church. Her daughter's got this protruding tumor. You can see it. Uh, just stick out under her under her clothes. Um, and then mom gets out of mom gets out of the wheelchair and starts walking, and everybody's just losing it. Everybody just is literally losing their mind. Renewing of the mind, like literally, like. You're like, wait, what is reality? You're like, what is reality? When you see this stuff happen, you're like, you're like, what do I even believe? You're like, what is going on, bro? You lose it. <coughs> okay, more stories, and then we're gonna pray. Uh, again, in person, um, one of my best friends, one of my best friends, a true homie, a true bro. We uh, were visiting a church, and. I don't know what's up with this church. They sing for like 60 minutes. One of those churches. 
whatever. We were at this church and the band was playing like the worship time, six, it's like 60 minutes. And then after worship, meaning like the band plays like like the Jesus songs, like like the yay, like the like the praise music, the band, the worship. After worship, it's announcements, and the guy gets up because it's a worship service. It's a Sunday service. Guy gets up, and it's time for announcements, and he like can't do announcements. He's got the microphone. He's on the platform. It's a room full of what? A thousand? No, there's got to be like six to seven hundred people in there. And he can't do announcements. He's like, what's going on over there? There's so much commotion and he's trying to do announcements. And then he's listening in. Me and my buddy are way at the back. We can't, we can't see, we can't hear. And then he's like, wait, you couldn't speak? You could not talk for 13 years, but during the music, during the praise and worship, you just got your voice back after not being able to speak for 13 years. And then the whole place goes crazy. I'm literally punching my friend. I just didn't know how to react. This person wasn't able to speak for 13 years and during worship, they got their voice back. And I'm like literally like physically assaulting my friend. I'm punching him. I am literally committing a crime. I'm like punching my friend, losing it. I'm crying. The whole place is going nuts. So this lady comes to our church couldn't walk ruptured brain bleed doctors like your motor skills she she gets up starts walking and then daughter's tumor just shrinks on its own dude the daughter's tumor just dissolved um here on our live stream somebody came um from liverpool england they were streaming in live from liverpool england this was on tiktok on our live stream some of us will remember this they're like i have this tumor on my spine they say and I'm at constantly eight out of 10 pain. Can we pray? We're like, yes, we're gonna pray for this. Um, we pray, their eight out of 10 constant pain that they're always in instantly goes to zero. Uh, and we're like, why don't you get this doctor verified? They come back to live stream and they're like, hey guys, I went to the doctor, they did an MRI, they did the scans, the tests, the tumor shrank. And I still have no pain is what they say. Doctor verified the tumor shrank and I'm pain free still. Um, oh, yeah, and they were like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Doctors were like, yeah, they did the MRI, but doctors doctors with the tests, they said to our live stream family member, I have never seen this in my life. In all my medical practice, I have never seen this. One more story. We go to church with these people. These are the, I know these people. We, I go to church with these people. One of our preachers, their whole family is at our church. Love the family. One of our preachers, somebody who goes to our church, okay, has so many doctor verified healing miracles. So many doctor verified healing miracles, including blind eyes and AIDS and HIV healed. Um, so many doctor verified healing miracles that the, that the governing board that governs doctors filed a lawsuit against this person that goes to our church and one of our preachers and ministers for malpractice. So many doctor verified miracles that the governing medical authorities filed a lawsuit against one of our preachers and ministers saying you're mal this is malpractice. You're practicing medicine without a license. And so our dear friend, family member, man of God, uh, is like, hey, thank you for the lawsuit. I'm not claiming to practice medicine without a license. I'm praying to Jesus and Jesus is miraculously healing people. And they won the lawsuit. Like, you know, they didn't get, they didn't get sued. Um, that's a lot of doctor verified healing miracles. If the governing board of authority that oversees doctors and medicine files a lawsuit against you because you have so many doctor verified healing miracles, that's a lot of miracles. That's a lot. <laughs> I guess we're just going to add. We're just going to multiply. We're just going to do our part. If you need a healing miracle, Jesus is going to heal you. Jesus is going to heal you. Dude, the stories, man. Here, we've witnessed this stuff. The doctor verified just in our online environment is nuts. 
Just receive, right? Whatever it is that you need, it's a tummy ache. It's a hangover. I don't know, bloodborne illness, whatever it is. We're going to pray. Just receive your healing. It's the oil. It's the healing oil of the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for your healing anointing. Actually, in the Holy Bible, they used oil to soothe wounds. They would use oil to like bandage and soothe wounds. Oil is for healing. That's why it makes sense. Okay, God, thank you. I mean, because I just, I just saw oil and I was like, what does this have to do with anything? God, we just thank you for your healing oil to come and soothe and bandage our wounds, heart wounds, trauma um, in our in our past, in our thought life that have made these cerebral imprints. It's like I see people's brain and it's like there's things that have happened to you, you in the past. And it's like it's it's made this imprint. It's imprinted something into your brain. God is healing that right now in Jesus' name. God, we just thank you for absolute healing from absolutely everything in Jesus' name. You know what it is? It's like concussions and knees and hips. It's concussions and knees and hips. Watch. Just watch. Dude, dude, dude. Is Papa Hearn in here? Yo, yo. Is that Rowan 1? No, that's not Rowan 1. Papa Hernan was like, my hip got healed 100%, and now I'm dancing. They went from like a 5 out of 10 in their hip. So many people's hips have been healed on live, and they dance. It's, it's, it's joints. It's like hips and knees and cartilage. ACL. What is an ACL? Doesn't matter. It's getting healed. God, whatever it is, inside and out, from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. Oil. 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 Rich. God-given, heaven-sent, supernatural oil. Dude, at my church, I know these people. The preacher was preaching about oil. I, I go to this person's house. I literally eat their food. I go to their house multiple times a month. And they're all of a sudden, our, one of our preachers is preaching about oil, from Matthew 25, by the way. It's a good passage. And then all of a sudden, my friend, oil, all over their hand all over their hand and then and then our we have eyewitnesses god we just thank you whether it's physical oil or supernatural oil it is only by your spirit god it is only by your spirit forgive us lord for making this about us and our gift mix and our incantations and our religious pattern it must be the holy spirit who shall touch Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Joe Visitor. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Guys, these comments, when, once I catch up on comments, there's the serious stuff, which Joe Visitor is like, my lump is almost gone. There's just the tenderness and soreness on my right side chest joe visitor's lump is disappearing okay we're gonna we're gonna press into this we're gonna pray for joe in jesus name amen tell us if you're healed let us know what's going on are you 10 percent better we can keep praying just let us know check out your healing we're gonna keep continue pressing in follow up with us we're gonna follow up with you just like joe visitor they're like hey my lump's almost gone let us know what's happening maybe you're 100 percent healed test it out and let us know we're gonna celebrate with you as we follow up, God, we just thank you for Joe Visitor. My lump is almost gone. There's just a tenderness slash soreness on my right side chest. God, we just thank you. Any remaining tenderness or soreness for Joe... Vi okay, that's not a good idea. I'm going to knock that over. For Joe Visitor, it's gone in Jesus' name. I'm actually getting a Bible verse for you. This is weird. This is... I'm very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> I'm very uncomfortable right now. Uh, uh, it's okay. I know somebody named the Comforter, so we're fine. Joe Visitor, this is literally going to work. Seriously, this is what I'm seeing. 
Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, for you, Joe Visitor, we're going to read this over you. We're going to keep this. You're healed in Jesus' name. We're, we're going to read the word of God over you, therefore the will of God over you. Uh, okay, whatever. Let's just go. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4. Write that in the chat for our homie and our bro, Joe Visitor. All the Josephs. We'll take them all. We have all the Josephs now. Joe Visitor. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4. Fill in the valleys. So that's a valley. It's like a dip. Fill that in. Why would you fill that in? So it's level. Fill in the valleys. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and the hills. What's a mountain and a hill? A mountain and a hill is like a bump. A mountain and a hill is like this lump. So fill in the valleys, make it plain, like make it grade, like flat, smooth. And level the mountains and the hills. Any bumps and any lumps, just level them. Smooth, at grade. <laughs> Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Smooth out the rough places. Smooth out the rough places. God, we just thank you for your child, Joe Visitor, a man of God. So generous so generous god that you would richly reward joe visitor right now for every single thing that they have sown into the lives around them into our live stream in particular in jesus name god we just thank you for filling in the valleys and leveling the mountains and the hills and the lumps and the bumps in jesus name all soreness leave all tenderness go full restoration and healing right here right now any growths does anybody have any growths yo it literally somebody comes into our live stream who we know love and trust they're probably here right now because it's monday public information they were like five centimeter ovarian cyst five centimeter ovarian cyst we prayed doctors were like it's gone it, like it just it's a non-issue doctor verified healing miracle live stream family any lumps bumps growths bye see you later flattening that out right now in jesus name as we read Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, Joe Visitor. There's a lot going on right now. There's seriously, there's a lot. Oh. Keep us updated, Joe Visitor. Um, and we will... What does this what does this icon mean? Okay, I got it. <laughs> um other chat sections. Let's check out the TikTok, see what kind of healing's taking place as one of the last things we do. Yes, I do have growths, says Mama Cynthia. In Jesus' name. No, you don't. What makes you say that? The word of God. By his stripes we are healed. We just thank you, Lord. We've been reading a lot about leprosy, Mama Cynthia, in our one-year Bible reading plan. Um, Jesus heals all of that stuff, the lumps and the bumps and the skin stuff, like whatever. We're going to read this over you too. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4, for Mama Cynthia. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Level the bumps and the lumps. Level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves. Straighten the curves. Straightened out, flattened out, and smooth out the rough places. That's a word. Smoothing out the rough places. Mama Cynthia, I see that God is smoothing out the rough places. Mama Cynthia, I see that God is smoothing out the rough patches. Right here, right now. In Jesus' name. It's more than the lumps and the bumps. It's honestly... It's, it's the oil covering everything, everything. Thank you, Jesus, for your daughter, for our true mama bear. Mama Cynthia, take care of us, man. You're like, where is that in the Bible? Literally, when we read about Elisha, it says that these two she-bears, it says that there were two she-bears that actually came out against um, basically voices that, were against the Lord and the Lord's people. There's these two she bears came out of nowhere to like protect and vindicate Elisha as like a move of God. 
That's where we're getting that mama bear stuff. She bears. God, we just thank you that mama Cynthia, she bears your healing. She bears your name. That mama Cynthia bears the healing anointing. Christ in her, the hope of glory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Full restoration. Um, I just see good tears. I see good tears, Mama Cynthia. I just see like you being healed and cleansed from the inside out. Like I just, I just see like tears, but they're like toxins. It's like coming out of your body. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. You're born to fly, Blue Hawk. Blue Hawk, born to fly, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. You are chosen. Blue Hawk is chosen. Yeah. Let's go. Oh, I keep knocking the camera. I'm sorry. In Jesus' name, amen. Lumps be healed. Doctor verified. I don't know, Mama Cynthia, if you can check. Um... Yeah. We prayed for this young lady. She had a lump on her neck. She wasn't feeling well, so we prayed. Like, honestly, 20-second prayer. In Jesus' name, lump dissolve. All pain leave. Feel better. Feel better. In Jesus' name, amen. We're like, how do you feel? She's like, she's like, the lump's gone, and I feel better. Just like that. Bro, you had a lump on your neck, and now it's gone? Yeah. So see if, see if it's gone. Keep, keep us updated um, as one of the last things that we're doing here. Now, faith uh, is uh, the substance uh, of things hoped for. Let's go. Mama Kristen, Papa Jeff, drop in the scriptures. It was the hips and the lumps. It's like Mama Cynthia got two words of knowledge happening. God, we just thank you in Jesus' name. We forgive. We forgive the surgeons. We forgive the medical system. We forgive the surgery. Like, whatever. Times, peoples, places, the hospital, the venue, the building. Ah, it's just right here, right now, God. As we were talking about, we must. And we do. We forgive. And we just thank you that we are coming to today with Mama Cynthia, brand new. Clean slate. God is doing a new thing. Isaiah chapter 43. God is doing a new thing. God, we just thank you. The past is past. We thank you for the God of the present. The past is past. Let healing be present right here, right now. We are present. We are present. We are present with Mama Cynthia. That's what it is. Bring it in, Mama Cynthia. Yo, some people get hugged when we heal them. That's, oh, some people get hugged when we heal them. Thank you, Jesus. Your daughter. Your daughter, Cynthia. Your daughter, Cynthia. Daughter of the King in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, we got to. I just see this crown, Mama Cynthia. I see that God has given you a crown because you are a daughter of the king. Thank you, Jesus, for lavishing your daughter. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Mama Cynthia, keep us updated. I was just seeing if there's any more there. As we um, make our way through the chat section one last time here, I receive healing from negative thinking and everything wrong in me. Exactly. Mama Cynthia got the, got the big girl prayers. Me too. I'll, I'll take that. Seriously, God. I'm going to read this over myself. I receive healing from negative thinking. Oh, Jesus. And everything wrong in me. That's good. Okay, guys, if you're on this chat section, meaning this chat section, meaning like this chat section, meaning that chat section, meaning the TikTok chat section, find Mama Cynthia's comment and read this over yourself. This is... This is the comment that I wasn't looking for, but this is the comment that I've always needed. This is the one. I receive healing from negative thinking and everything wrong in me. I receive it. I receive it. Okay, guys, time out. 
Ministry break. <laughs> this is very serious, Jeremy. I don't know why you're laughing. This is very serious. This is a very serious moment, Jeremy. Behave. Yeah, I received that. You know what's wrong? Not enough laughter. That's what I receive healing for. I just want more smiles. Because it's not about miles per gallon, my friends. Everyone's like into like electric vehicles and diesel engines. Bro, a diesel engine literally revs to 2,000 revs per minute. Diesel? <laughs> Pardon me. Um, it's not about miles per gallon. It's about smiles per gallon. Smiles per gallon. <gasps> so good. That's funny. No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay, I think we're done. <laughs> yeah, taking the healing in <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, When I catch up on the chat, it's just like... Things that we talk about literally 15 minutes ago, Mama G. They're... they're I'm like... Who over here talking about who over here talking about douche buckets? What's going on? What is what is that? I don't know. It's gotta be Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. It's probably the original language. I don't really I gotta study. This guy this guy definitely need to study a little more. Just a little more at least. Oh my gosh! Mama G talking about it over here. Needless. Needless to say. Oh yeah, because we were talking about in context, in context, Faith Diane from Singapore streaming in live and she was like, doctors want me to jab my own fingers and inject steroids into my fingers. She's a pro bowler, Faith Diane. Um, we've seen the newspaper article. Anyway, so we were like talking about needles. Needless to say. Too blessed to be stressed, guys. You guys are the best. Oh, I thought it was, um, you know who I thought this was? Marianne Diaz. Marianne Diaz. I thought this person was Marianne Diaz. We love Marianne Diaz. I know y'all remember Marianne Diaz. Boom, pow, bam. Okay, guys, I apologize. Uh, we're gonna get going pretty soon here. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. Amen. Okay. I think that's it. Oh, wait. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. So many chats. Not complaining. Shalom. Let's go. In Jesus' name for this person. I feel like we've seen this person before. I feel like we know this person. In Jesus' name. God, you know this person. And you know exactly what they need. And even when they need it. Right here, right now. In Jesus' name. We partner with Best Case Scenario. With Father God's heart. Provider. Provider. It's it's Yahweh Yaira. That's really what it is. Where we see with Ashley, Abraham, and Isaac. And God, God providing. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, lots of comments. Best people. Oh, we got chats about dreams, guys? Of course we have chats about dreams. Of course we do. Uh, healing. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, if anybody's getting healed, what's going on, just let me know. Just highlight your comment some way, somehow, with some emojis or some all caps. So it stands out in... All of this fantastic, really good, loved, and well-received conversation. This is what we need. And this is what we have. Family loving on family. People responding to people. It's the best. This is... But I'm just letting you know, like, from my perspective, it's just like... It's tiny, tiny words and lots of them. Oh, who was that? Somebody was like, bro, just zoom in. <laughs> just hold down control and hit and hit the plus sign. You know, somebody was saying that. And I was like, dude, this person's on a, on the tech team. Officially, you're hired. You're hired. Uh, yo, Mama Harriet talking about oil. A materialization of oil. Okay. We are going to pray for healing miracles. Ugh, Lisa McDonald, let's go. Seriously, let's go. We got to get going here. 
I remember seeing a crippled person walk. A life for life. That's amazing. I'm getting so many more stories coming to mind. Okay, just one. I was just on public transit. I was literally in public transit. I was just like literally like riding trains. Public transit. There's like people everywhere. There's this guy. He's got crutches. Uh, so we're in public, whatever. I know what we've been taught. Do not talk to strangers. I would like to amend and revise that. Talk to strangers. So I talked to this guy. I don't, I don't know. He's a stranger. He's on crutches. I'm like, hey, what what happened? Um, can I pray with you? He's like, yeah. So I pray with him. I'm like, amen. And he's like, dude, what did you do? He's like, what did you just do to me? I'm like, what's, I'm like, what's going on? You tell me. He's like, he's like, I feel like fire. He's like, I feel like so warm and hot and tingly from like the waist down. And I'm like, I didn't do anything, bro. I like, didn't even touch you. I like, didn't even touch you, <sighs> bro, guy. Oh, that's where we were with a life. I'm like, why did I tell that story? Okay, we need to go because a life for life was talking about seeing people walk. That's it. Um. Okay, I think we're out of here. I think we're out of here. Love you guys. We're gonna hug. We're gonna bless. We're gonna commission and maybe make some announcements because unknown actually brought up a good point we love unknown so next week monday next week um i am going to where i live british columbia canadia i don't know guys i don't like it any more than anybody else i have to turn my clock back an hour boohoo you get an extra hour of sleep cry me a river yes i have to turn my clock back one hour next week so when we come back for monday i don't know what that's gonna do to you and your region if you don't turn back your clock an hour like I am, that would mean that you show up an hour earlier before we actually go live. That's what that will mean. Clear as mud, right? Same difference, I know. So we'll just keep you updated as the week. Unknown, you're the guy. Okay, please remind us as we keep going through the week here and we'll just keep everybody posted. That's next week, the time change. Um, For us, I don't know. It, the, the different regions are affected differently. If we were unable to get to your question, comment, concern, or prayer request today, we apologize. We really do. The great news is we are here Monday to Friday, every single weekday, even on holidays. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Kick, and Instagramly Family, as well as TikTok. Starting at 3.33 p.m. Pacific, 5.33 p.m. Central, 6.33 p.m. Eastern, Eastern in the evening lots of opportunity for anybody and everybody to come back receive the care prayer love and attention that you would like uh hey if you're still receiving your healing you feel a little better but you want to feel a lot better good news it is not the live stream that heals you it is only jesus that heals you you can continue to pray in this posture of worship go to jesus for your full 100 percent healing even when we log off of live stream as many people have received their full healing even when we're not live and then they come back and tell us so uh we just bless you and commission you to do that and uh, we might have holy spirit after party just let us know i will host is the comment that we're all looking for so it's clear and concise for all of us uh and then we'll let you we'll let you know how to get there uh kind of what that is um if it is in fact a thing if not then that's fine you know how we roll that's fine um oh thank you to people who are helping us sustain, cover the costs, Devon Technologies, Straight Up Sales and Hobbies, and uh, I just want to thank you guys um, for everything. Our, our online pastoral care team for being present, responding to people, uh, people who are gifting equipment in terms of development, which is different than sustainability, but bring it in, guys. Love y'all. Thank you. Seriously. Seriously, just thank you guys. And we'll see you when we see ya. Until then, fam. Take care. God bless. <gasps> oh, bye bye. Until then, meaning like tomorrow or Holy Spirit part after party. Take care. God bless. <gasps> oh, bye bye.
Hey guys, didn't see you there. Welcome to the, what do we call this again? Post end credit scenes for Facebook, a YouTube, a Twitch, and a kick. Instagram's logged off. TikTok is logged off. It's just us, baby. <laughs> anyway, no Holy Spirit after party. One for the road, fam. Just thought I'd come back because unknown would know. Only the real ones, only the hashtag real ones stay for post and end credit scenes. <sighs> Big squeeze, guys. I L Y S M. I love y'all so much. And we'll see you tomorrow. Until then, take care. God bless. Oh, bye bye.